Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about the exciting new features that are available in Adobe Captivate 9. That's right, I said Captivate 9. I've been waiting a while for this release. I'm so excited by this because this is the game changer version of Captivate 9. This allows everyone to make some really cool stuff happen in their e-learning projects. Um, I've already covered off in a previous video how you can deal with the new enhancements to uh, responsive design. So take a look at that video when you get a chance. In this video, we're going to talk about multi-state views and multi-state view objects. Specifically, we're going to go into uh, how you can use this stuff to make your courses more interesting and more interactive. So let's get started. Right off the bat, you know, as far as multi-state objects are concerned, you should have experience with this already. There has been a sprinkling of this in Captivate in the past. Uh, first of all, uh, you can certainly do image buttons and you can certainly do uh, shapes used as buttons to get different states and we'll show you how you can do that now with transparent buttons as well. So I'm going to add a, a simple button to this page. Maybe it'll be a navigation control, uh, something as simple as maybe a next button. And uh, because this is responsive design, I'm going to actually place this on a location on the screen. We'll say uh, we'll have it to be uh, 10% from the bottom of the screen regardless of which um, responsive breakpoint we're using and we'll have it to be 5% from the right hand side so again if you're on the different choices for responsive design and for those that are just noticing this there are five different breakpoints now for responsive design take a look at the other video if you want to see more about that but what's great about this now is that I have, uh, this is a transparent button, I have the ability to create different states. And here's how you do it. You press, from your properties panel, you press the state view button and that will switch you to state view and you will see, of course, um, the object states along the left hand side of your page. Now because it knows it's a button, it goes with uh, what you would expect to find for a button. In this case, the normal or default state, plus you have a rollover effect and a down state. So let's set this up. Let's give it something um, a little more interesting to, to look at. Actually, let me exit from here first, and I'm going to make one small change. I'm going to make this a transparent button first of all. And I might as well get rid of, rid of the stroke. I don't want a green outline there and let's go back to state view. So now I have a transparent button on the rollover effect. Well, let's uh, let's change the normal as well. Let's have a gradient and I'll choose dark on the top there. And this is kind of exciting because you couldn't do this with smart shapes before. I'm going to change the color of the text as well to be white and bold and I'm going to bump up the font to, let's go 24. So there's my button. Let's see the rollover version. I might just do a subtle change to make it look a little bit different, like change the, the gradient to be from, let's say, light to dark to dark to light, something as simple as that. And then the down button, let's do this. Let's do something crazy. Let's change the color of the text and We'll make this more of a solid color, not more of, but a solid color. And let's choose a color from the button itself so that it's similar. Uh, let's choose a lighter color, actually, because I've got the black text. I don't want it to. That's good. So now that I have my changes, so there's the normal view, the rollover effect, and the down effect for that button. Let's exit the state. So now we have a button that works well across all the different states. Let's test it out here by doing a preview from the slide. So here we go. There's my button. 
there's the rollover effect. Again, remember this is a transparent button and when I press it, the text will change color and the background will change color. Perfect, exactly what I wanted it to do. That's fantastic. So again, this is going to give you a lot more creative control with something as simple as buttons, but let's do something a little bit more advanced. So I have this page here where I've got um, a lovely new, I think it's a Kia, and I want it to change colors. I'm going to choose uh, different buttons to change its color. Now, I've done this uh, with the help of Adobe Photoshop and adjusting the hue of the paint job and I've saved three different versions of this image and I've loaded those into the library. So let's start off with, uh, with some buttons where the user can select the color here and it's real simple to do. Um, from here we're going to go to uh, change the state of and that's an option that's now available under actions and we're going to choose car in this case car is what I've named that object on screen and I'm going to change it well in this case to normal because I've made this blue is normal in this case uh, red we're going to do the same thing here we're going to uh, scroll down until we get change the state of car to red and we'll do the same thing for green change the state of car to oh it's already on green I'm gonna make sure I'm unchecking uh, and I've done this already uh, continue playing the project I don't want it to proceed every time I press one of these buttons uh, presumably you could have another button on here that would be your navigation to the next slide um, just to show you how I achieve this let's click on the object itself and go to state view and you can see that I've loaded up three different versions of the exact same image just with that adjustment and of course all I needed to do was add a new state and then of course make a change by importing the new color directly into that but I won't bother because I don't need a fourth state here I'm going to delete this state and exit the state here. Let's test this out, see how it works from this slide. So here we go, here's my car. It's already blue, let's see what it looks like if I give it a red paint job. Nice! Green paint job, I kinda like the green. I don't know if the car actually comes in these colors, I just picked them arbitrarily in Photoshop. But this totally makes it easy to do advanced interactions that you would have done in the past by using uh, you know some some advanced actions um, working with some code and showing and hiding different versions of the same object it would be very complex as you can see now it's super easy to do let's exit from there and let's look at one more interaction I came up with David, he's one of the characters that comes included with Adobe Captivate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him in the dunk tank over here. Now, you could do that in Captivate 8, you could do that in Captivate uh, 7. Um, but the problem is, is that in, um, you know, in this particular instance, David doesn't look like he's going into a dunk tank. He looks like he's just standing there minding his own business. But what I've done is uh, I've actually set up some states for him already. So when you drag him over, he's going to go shrug his shoulders. Oh, well, I guess I'm going in the dunk tank. And once he's accepted in there, we're going to have him look like he's, you know, trying to get out of the tank. He's sort of pantomining, uh, you know, trapped behind a, a wall. And uh, I have some other states for reject and drag start as well let's make start let's choose something different for start um, let's just see what that that process kinda looks like here so we could choose uh, you know maybe he's like hold on a second so we'll use that image there I have to resize this of course because I should have uh, set it up to be the appropriate size in the first place there we go so let's exit from the state view and let's 
preview this from from this slide to see what that looks like. Again, I think you'll see that this is a great way to make your drag and drops a little bit more interactive as well, a little bit more interesting. So here we are with David. I'm going to grab him. He goes, wait a second. No. Uh-oh. I guess no choice. I'm going in the drink. Let go. There he is, trapped inside. So again, just to summarize, multi-state view allows you to create a lot more interaction and again it's really easy to do you don't have to know a lot of code you don't have to figure out advanced actions and variables and all that business it's really simple and straightforward guys if you like the videos that I produce for you I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and hey if you like this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up